J here for Stratford Paddock, Brentford 1, Manchester United 1. We're here for the live review. Joining me is Mr. Joe McGrath. I mean, to be honest with you, in the 95th minute, if you'd have said we were going to draw, I'd have said, well, we don't yeah. deserve that. That's a miracle. But I'll take it. But in the 97th, it looked like we'd won it. And yet, somehow, we didn't. They scored, I think Brentford scored with their 31st shot of oh, the game. Man. Which sort of sums Awful. it up, doesn't it? it 31 uh, shots we conceded tonight against Brentford. I can't I mean, quite it's get my insane. Head around it. I mean, the whole game was was torturous because Brentford looked like a very dominant attack inside. They kept on giving United a lot in their in United's box, and even looking at the the uh, the sort of touches inside United's box, 85 touches Brentford had inside our box is just 16 that we've had. They just looked like they wanted it a little bit more. And they looked more deadly on the ball. They found the wingers better. They cut inside more. They found passes directly into the box. You had one, two, th four shots on the post. There was just moment after moment where you think Brentford are going to score it. Then Mount gets the goal. Jubilation in the studio. We thought, what a jammy team we are. We've won one nil. And this keeps that pressure on to win, or not to win, sorry, to get into the top five, which, fingers crossed, is Champions League football. Then two minutes later, you know, all that dream, that, that the jamminess that is Man United all comes crumbling down and Brentford get a goal that I think, Joe, let's be honest, they deserved. And I know we shouldn't say that as United fans, we want to win. But if someone was a neutral looking at this game, one all, and even for Brentford, they should have won this game. But I, I, it, 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 it's devastating. But I'm not, I'm not devastated about Brentford scoring. I'm just devastated about the game because yeah. the game from a United fan point of view was shy. No, it, it was, it wasn't good enough at all for Manchester United. From, from almost from ten minutes in, I thought the first ten minutes was pretty even. But then after the, those those initial ten minutes, Brentford came into the game. Brentford were having creating chance after chance after chance. United giving the ball away constantly. Very, very sloppy. Didn't get a hold of the game at all. We conceded so many corners, it was unreal. And you always got the impression that yeah. sooner or later, Brentford are going to get a goal. The frustrating thing was, we sort of, we did the hard bit, or we got yeah, over the yeah. hard bit, where it looked like we got away with it. And then right at the death, yeah. we obviously let them get a goal. Um, there's a couple of chats, mm. and what people do get involved in the comments, and make sure you are hitting like, share, and subscribe as well. Nick Collins says, I've no idea what Adam Wambasaka was doing for that equaliser. Every United player has stepped up for the off-fire trap, and he's fucking jogging. Playing everyone on. I don't think Aaron Wambasaka played well today at all. I thought it was I pretty thought he had poor. a really poor game. And, I, and I'm a Wambasaka fan. I've said it before. I like the lad. I think he's got something to offer. But today, and there's there's often these occasions, and it happens with for some reason a vast majority of United players where you like them and you can see something in them. But for some reason, they just don't show up. We'll speak about Rashford today. We'll speak about McTominay today. And we, we, we won't speak about them for the first time this season, we've already mentioned these players for some reason. Yeah. In games, they can be dreadful. And it's like, well, you've probably cost us the game today because you've not scored or you've probably cost us the game because you've not controlled the mid or you've probably cost us the game because you've been sloppy and you've let in uh, or you've, and you've not kept up with the offside trap and then they've gone on to score. It's just like, what's going on? Yeah. It's it, frustrating because it, you can't, I can't put my finger on it, really. No, it is. I'm just watching there. I'm watching this Brentford I'm goal. I'm Tony creating the, the chance for the goal. I mean, Martinez and Casemiro can't get near him. Uh, JS, JJS in the Super Chat says, how could Martinez and Casemiro let Tony pass them like that? You're stealing a win. You should defend with your life. Yeah. Uh, Marty Smith says, Jay, that was shocking. We are awful. And the fan base wonders why so many are Tanag. No, I don't think anyone does wonder why people are Tanag out. I don't think that's true. No, I think, we I get, think, we understand I think it. even if you're not, you understand why we are. We've lost 12 games, I think, in the league this season, is it? Like, I, I don't think you can, yeah. surely, even if, oh, sorry, 11. Like, anyone who, who isn't Tanag out can understand why people are when you've lost at home to Fulham, Bournemouth. Um, City, Brighton, Crystal Palace, and you've lost away, and you've obviously got knocked out of the Carabao Cup to Newcastle, and you've finished bottom of your Champions League group. I don't yeah. think anyone is sort of scratching their head going, how can anyone be Tanag out? I get it. I've just sort of been always backing this manager because of injuries, because of the other options I don't think are great, and because I feel like there's still the chance that we can end the season with, sil with silverware, which might be enough to sort of give him a, a chance under the new regime. But when you see performances like that, it makes it almost impossible to defend Eric Tanak. The one thing I will say is, despite the manager having to take some responsibility for today, I think the players need to take some responsibility as well, because 
not all on the manager that some of those performances some again, of the players are just yeah. not good enough uh, Akash Solomon says you hear the phrase headless chickens tossed around but losing every single aerial duel and our cowardly defence and build up really do sum it up if Marcus and Ghana don't score it's over um, <laughs> Key Buckley says that was class Eric Tenag is a comic genius um, Sergio Lopez says don't get it Eric Tenag is a good coach but we constantly play shite can't control games regardless of who's playing it's true isn't it like we said at the start of the game you've got a Brentford team that have hardly picked up any points over the last uh, run of uh, games and then you've got United team coming off the back of one of the best victories under Ten Hag beating Liverpool in the last minute yeah. and a decent United team yeah. with, a, with a, a strong midfield on the bench a decent uh Back four, you know, a really strong attacking lineup with Garnacho, Hoyland, and, and Rashford. Okay, the midfield was a little bit different because you've got McTominay, uh, but I suppose Manu and Bruno are definitely a starter. So you've got a pretty solid team for Ten Hag here. And yet Brentford looked in some parts of the game like they moved the ball like a Champions League, uh, uh, like, like they were going for a Champions League spot. like Because there was parts of that game where the fluidity of how they could go from us attacking and we hardly attacked, we just held the ball a little bit in our in their third. And then they would work it like like prime, you know, Perlow. You'd find a pass and you'd be like, oh, how have Brentford now completely switched this around and have got a, a good opportunity for them? It... it it, we make teams sometimes look better than they are. No. Why is that? 100%. Uh, Michael W has been a member of the first team for 31 months. Says, so disappointing tonight. Was looking forward to the game all week as well. And I'm starting to sway on the Tenag outside of things now, sadly. I mean, there's only so many times you can take disappointing performances before you don't get fed up with a manager. Chris Thompson says, if we are getting rid of Target Hag, who are you bringing in right now? I say the guy needs a chance with a new structure around him and proper recruitment. I, I worry for him, me. Ten Hag I, doesn't. I don't think Ten Hag gets sacked at the uh, until the end of the season. But I do think moments like this are a nail in the coffin. Yeah. Because I don't see any way in which the new board bringing a new manager in March slash April. No, 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 no. They're not going to sack him. They're not going to sack him. But this is a draw against Brentford. A game like I this. I don't think they'll sack him when he's got a semi-final in two weeks as well. Yeah, a game like, like this is just one of those three moments. weeks. Sorry, I think that that makes no sense to me. Um, Serenity says, Gano, Ganacho, I can slide for inconsistency at his age, but Rashford really lacks any intelligence in his play. He puts his head down and runs into the space that isn't there, like Sterling. Uh, Redman07, uh, let me find it. says, I've missed your milestone chat. I don't know where that is. Sorry, bro. Um, if you put it in the chat, I don't know what it is. I can't find it. Um, I mean, you look at it now, you've got, I think next up is, is, is and we put it on the form that, that is, is, it's over. Champions it's League. over. Is it done for you? Have you given I mean, up on Champions League football let's next season? Let's be quite season? honest, Jay. It requires us, and we've kind of done the maths between us in our head it, then. It requires us to win every single game pretty much yeah. to the end of the season. It also requires Tottenham and Villa to drop what? I think it's eight points. If we get up our game in hand against Villa, eight points is it? They were behind both teams. It requires them to drop points as well. Now, they aren't, you know, on, they, they get wins. Both of them, three points today, and it didn't seem too much of a hassle. I think Spurs found a little bit tricky against Luton, but then three points secured. I mean, they, they wiped the floor with Wolves today, Aston Villa. It, it, it just They just land on three points where we make every game look that little bit difficult. So there is no doubt in my mind that it's over. And there's even a doubt in my mind if sixth place is going to be our final spot this year. Really? I really think with performances like that, You've got to look at West Ham, Newcastle. If they start finishing the season strongly, I mean... <laughs> Sixth place can be a Champions League spot, you know. Why? I think there's a way of like... It, won't, it won't be, you know. It, I think if West Ham win the... If West Ham were finish, finish fifth or summer and win the Europa League, then sixth place becomes a Champions League spot. I've seen so, I know it's not going to happen. By the way, because there's no way West Ham are getting fifth. But there is a way, I think, that you six players could be Champions League spot. But we don't need to worry about that because we're not making we're Champions be seven. League season. Um, 
Yeah, I just, uh, sorry, Mayor Amateur says, let's chat about Scotty for a minute. Guy literally has no position on the ball, hides when we have the ball, poor off the ball, poor on the ball. He scores in some games, but the trade-off is a lot higher. Scott is Eric Ten Hag's Achilles heel. Does, does, uh, Do you I know what the problem with that is, right? And I, I get it, I'm not being a big fan of Scott McTominay in midfield. I started, right? I haven't, I've said this all along, I said I think you lose something when you start in midfield. This you've got as well is, like, I understand why he started today, because of the yeah. Liverpool game and because other players haven't played on but even Casemiro comes on, right? And I know he get you give a good ball to Franny in the build up to the goal, but he's sloppy as well. Like he, I know he can say, "Well, he's, he's a bit rusty, whatever." But he lunges in, he gives it away sometimes, and I don't think he's been that great this season. I just feel that, like, if Casemiro's fully fit, then yeah, he should start. But I think if the manager's looking at it going, "I've got a half fit Casemiro who's a bit ropey when he's not fully fit," and I've got Scott McTominay who has done well in his yeah. last game, I understand why the manager picked Scott McTominay today. It's just moving forward. I think. If everyone's fit, I don't think Scott McTominay starts. Uh, Alea says, can we blame Eric Tanag? It's the same people letting us down every, every, after time after time. Rashford wasn't asked to run today. Adam Wambasaka jogging all game. McTominay not able to pass. Um, DMAC047 says, we are a ragtag over the hill. HP and coming prima donnas. Uh, toxic mess. And Key Buckley says, Varan and Casemiro are finished. Um, Mr. Sodium says right. subs should have been seen. I think Varane got a knock, didn't he? he got when, a knock. when Tony went he through, okay. he got a knock. He got a knock. I just thought defensively we looked all over the gaff today. Uh, Sam Wise eight seven seven. Welcome to the academy. Um, Nick Collins says, Do, "Is it me or does this happen after every time? Uh, after every after international break? Sorry, um, we win before the international break and then play awful in the game after the break. That's been happening since the days of David Moyes, you know." I remember us beating Arsenal before the international break and coming back and just drawing. We were, we were poor. Uh, Steel Flexi says Mitt Tom was a ghost. I mean, it almost feels like just collectively we were shite. Right? Yeah, collectively we were shite. I mean, the 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 tricky thing is, Jay's this is up and down, up and down, up and down, because these players will will show for Tenag one week and then they won't show him the week mm. after. So then they get their name on the team sheet mm. and then next week they just. They just let him down. I know. And uh, Marcus says, Jay, your Casemiro agenda is embarrassing. That's not, I haven't got an agenda against him. I've called him one of the best players in the world. Uh, you will never call out Bruno again. That's just drivel. I call out Bruno all the time. I don't think he's been consistent enough this season. And I've said multiple times on multiple videos, so I don't know what you're talking about. David Briscoe uh, has gifted five Stretford Paddock memberships. Thank you, David. Big thanks to what you. What does that mean? That means five people can go and get um, a membership for free, man. What a right, Which is, on. yeah, that's, I mean, get stuck in. do you know what I mean? What a legend. Thank you, David. There's a little bit of Easter cheer that we yeah. all needed, eh? Um, it's been a hard watch today, hasn't it, man? It really has. A poor performance by everyone, to be honest with you. Glad that Mason Mount got his goal, but he deserved a, he deserved a win for it. He did. I think he, he's the only one you can say he came on, got a goal, did his bit, but collectively, the team just weren't good enough today. And we go again um, with Chelsea on the horizon. I mean, really, yeah. it really drained me today, you know. Yeah. Like, we've had some tough watches, haven't we? I mean, I think Bournemouth is still, I mean, you raised the point because some people said in the chat, this might be the worst United performance. Bournemouth is still number one. But that was really, really bad today. And I felt like, you know, I mean, when we scored, we, we couldn't quite believe it in the studio. There was big celebrations all up on our feet, but fucking you know. hell. David Briscoe says, sorry, I couldn't give more. Don't apologise, bro. You've been at Zen NC, says the Easter Bunny came early this year. Thank you. Uh, we've got extra content coming up on a members video. We're going to be hearing from uh, on the members section. We're going to be hearing from Andy Tate as I've well. I've seen Andy Tate rock up. Right. He's ready to tell you his thoughts. Right, so we'll get there in a minute. Uh, right, big thank you to Joe. Thank you very much. Right, I've been Jay. That's been Joe. This has been a review of the game where Manchester United Fuck pretty much ended know. our Champions League hopes. Thanks for watching.